Let's first do a quick recap on how you use MicroPython on a microcontroller board. The focus and examples for this tutorial series will be for the ESP32, and I'll be using my Tiny Pico. You can use any other MicroPython compatible microcontroller, but getting MicroPython onto it will be out of scope for this section. Once plugged in, you need to flash the MicroPython firmware onto it. You do this by downloading the MicroPython firmware you're after from micropython.org, use ESP tool to erase what's already on your board, and then use ESP tool to flash the MicroPython firmware onto your board. Once MicroPython is on your board, that's it. You can connect to your board in various ways to put as much or as little code on there as you like. I'm going to be using RShell during this tutorial. Check my previous video on how to download and flash MicroPython and how to get and use RShell basics. So, how is MicroPython different from Arduino C and what things will likely catch you out? 1. There's no setup or loop. You can code anywhere. Almost. 2. There are no semicolons to terminate the end of a line. Yay! 3. There are no squiggly braces. MicroPython uses indentation to group code together. The indentation levels are quite strict. 4. Order of execution. Code is executed in order from top to bottom. Therefore, any functions that you want to call need to have been already defined above that point. 5. There is some pre-pass error checking when you execute your code, but often errors later in your code won't show up until the execution point is reached. From here I'll be showing you code directly in either Visual Studio Code, my IDE of choice, or directly in the REPL running on the Tiny Pico via a terminal window, or command prompt in Windows. OK, let's hit the ground running. OK, I'm in Visual Studio Code. I've got a terminal window set up down below, and I have a webcam pointing to a Tiny Pico over here that has an LED connected to it. A blue LED, my favorite color. So let's R shell directly to the Tiny Pico. And I've got a connection to the Tiny Pico. I'm going to open up the REPL and I'm going to make this LED turn on. In MicroPython, everything is available in what's called modules. A module is like a library, I guess, in Arduino C. A lot of modules are written in MicroPython. Some of them are written in C for extra performance. There's one particular module that we're going to work with now, and it's called Machine. Machine is a module that gives you access to the hardware on your microcontroller. So I'm going to import Machine. Now remember, in the REPL, I can just type code directly, like it's already inside a script. So I import Machine. What we can do now is actually type help machine and it gives us a list of all the different things that the machine module has. And there's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> One of the ones that we want though is pin. This is our IO class. So I'm going to say LED equals machine dot pin. Now I'm using 25 just for now, because it's out of the way on the microcontroller. So 25, and I'm going to make it a machine.pin.out. And now I can say LED on. And the LED turned on. And I can say LED off. And the LED turns off. I can also say LED.value true. And of course, LED.value false. Notice that true and false use capital T and F in MicroPython. It's not all lowercase. I could also just say LED.value 1 or 0. How cool is that? Not a lot of code there. Now, typing machine.pin all the time is kind of annoying. So what we can do in MicroPython is we can extract a portion of a module for us to use. So I'm going to say from machine import pin. Now I can use pin directly. I can just type, in this case, p equals pin 25 pin dot out. And now I can do the same thing, p dot on, p dot off. That way I don't have to type machine all the time. Now, I could also make it flash on and off. I need to use some type of delay if I'm going to do that. 
and there is a module called time that we need. So I'm going to import time and now I'm going to say while one, an endless loop. Now with all if statements or loops or anything else in MicroPython, you designate that it's going to be a code block by sticking the colon at the end. And you'll notice automatically in the REPL that it tabs me over. So it knows that I've got a code block. So I can now type p.on and then I'm going to say time.sleep. Now in Arduino, the delay is milliseconds. In MicroPython, it's seconds. So I'm going to tell it to sleep for one second. I'm going to say p.off. I'm going to tell it to sleep for one second. Hit enter, and then I just hit backspace, and it takes me out of the loop, and now it's running. And this is blocking code, so as you notice that I didn't get a prompt at the bottom. It's going to sit there running until I hit control C. Okay, what's if we wanted to make it flash 10 times and then stop? Well, we can say counter equals 10. Notice I'm not designating an int or a type at all. It now knows that counter is an int. I'm now going to say while counter is greater than zero. Excuse my spaces. I try to space everything out. The space before and after brackets. Sometimes I forget. So now I'm going to say p.on time.sleep1 p.off time.sleep1 counter minus equals 1. Now there's no minus minus and plus plus inside MicroPython but it uses the minus equals notation. Or I could just say counter equals counter minus 1. So I do that. I now enter. This will flash 10 times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now it's given us our prompt back. All of this has been typed directly inside the REPL. The REPL is running on the tiny pico. That is just nuts. So you can sit in the REPL and experiment with all sorts of code. You can test things out without having to write, compile, or even write and upload to the microcontroller. You can just type code directly in. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm going to exit the REPL, do control X, and we're actually gonna make a blink script instead. So the same thing, but we're gonna put it inside a file and copy the file over, and then I'll show you how to run that script. So what we've basically done is the Arduino Blink sketch, which is this set of code here. Now you notice that in the Arduino side, there's a setup where we have to set the pin mode and there's a loop that runs forever. And that is gonna run forever until you unplug power for the microcontroller. You can't break out of it on the Arduino. But in MicroPython, there wasn't anything. We created a loop to obviously flash, but there's no specific loop function. We can not have a loop if we don't want. So I'm gonna to go to a new file and I'm gonna type in from machine import pin. We also want to import time. Now I'm going to say counter equals, make it five this time, make it a bit quicker. And I'm going to say p equals pin 25 pin dot out. So while counter is greater than zero. Now right now, Visual Studio Code doesn't know what language I'm typing in, so I'm going to tell it that it is Python. And you'll see that all the formatting will look nicely and it'll automatically indent the linter that I'm using inside Visual Studio Code will do this for me, which is great. So I'm gonna say p.on time not sleep and I'll sleep at half a second this time. p.off time.sleep, make it 0.25 for the off, so we have more time on than off, and counter minus equal one. And then at the end we're gonna say print done. Cool, so I'm going to say this as blink.py, 
in my code examples folder, which is where I'm sitting down here. So I'm in R shell still. So I'm, I'm going to copy blink.py to PyBoard. I'm going to go back in the REPL and I'm going to say import blink. And there we go. So just by importing my blink, it loads it up and it executes any code that's in there. Now, if all of the code was sitting inside functions and there was nothing calling anything, then it would just do an import and not actually run anything like when I imported time before. If I now tell it to import again, I can use the up and down arrows to go through my history. It won't actually do anything now because it assumes it's already been run, it's already been loaded, it's cached in memory. Because I don't have any functions inside this code to actually say run this code, it'll only run that one time. So what we can do is if I control X to get back to the prompt, I'll go back to my code and I'm going to create this as a function. So you create a function in MicroPython, you use the def statement and then you give it a name. So I'm going to call it Blinky. Now in MicroPython, I guess the standard coding practice is that you have all of your variable names and function names all lowercase. Uh, there's no camel case. If I wanted to do a two word thing, I'd do something like blink LED and use an underscore in between. It's taken me a while to get used to this new naming convention, but this seems to be the, the accepted way to do things. So I'm going to say define blink LED. And again, I give it a colon and that means there's going to be a code block. And what I'm going to do is bring all of this code inside. And the way I do that is I just tab it over. And because it's tabbed over, as you can see, it's all inside this one method. Now you notice that there's two levels of tabbing because the while is its own code block. Now if I was to do something like this, then counter minus equals one will not happen inside the loop. And therefore this loop will go forever because it's never going to decrement. And if print done was outside, then when I run this in the REPL, it'll just print done straight away. So I want all this to be inside my blink LED. So I save that again. So I'm going to say copy blink. Now I'll show you an easier way to do this in the future, but just for now, it makes it nice and clear what I'm doing. So I've copied it over, go back into my REPL. Now when I type in import blink, nothing happens. Why? Because there's no code sitting outside of this function definition. But now I can say blink dot blink LED and now it's blinking the LED and when it's finished I can tell it to do it again so I can call function whenever I want to. Wow once again that was a lot of information to take in but I hope you can get a glimpse of how nice MicroPython is to code in. I'll go through more of the basics like conditions loops and strings in the next video but for now I wanted to leave you with a few more differences between MicroPython and C. MicroPython uses dynamic typing for variables, not static. That means you don't need to declare the type of the variable. MicroPython will work it out dynamically. But don't confuse static and strongly typed. MicroPython is a strongly typed programming language. MicroPython offers much easier memory management than C, and it's a modern language with better strings, tuples, comprehensions, dictionaries, and just way less cruft. Okay, that's it folks. I hope I've encouraged even just a few of you to start playing with MicroPython. I'll catch you all in my next video. Bye.